Wait, something isn't right. Can you still hear me? You're supposed to wind up back at the cabin again. But everything is getting fuzzy. Hey, last time somebody alerted me to the fact that I needed to keep playing everything on the same save file or else some things don't carry through properly. And I hadn't been doing that between the first and the second video. So what I did was I went back to the first playthrough and then retraced my steps again. And this is the, the same thing that we saw in the last video towards the end, but this section seems to have changed a little bit. What's going on? Where are we? This is then the second chapter of the nightmare, and then we turn around, and we're losing track of everybody, it's getting super hairy. It's finally happened, hasn't it? We finally cracked. I have a knack for breaking the world, don't I? Hmm. The world around you is unwound, its physical matter is replaced by textured nothing. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Memory returns. This is different, right? This place is called the Long Quiet? Memory returns. There is a distant rumbling, a sound of many sounds, undulations pulse louder as something other comes close. You already know what dwells in the empty spaces. Feelers probe across the fabric of reality. Extremities find your consciousness and wrap themselves around it. You are no longer alone. Confusion. Why are you here? I am unfinished. That's new. Resistance. Fingers drag claws across the glass surface of your soul. Frustration. This vessel is full of you. It is useless to us if it doesn't bring more gifts. This is also different, isn't it? Bringing more gifts. So the, the first time around when we had that weird amalgamated princess and then the, the hands, feelers, monster thing took it, did it take that to be like uh, me offering it a gift? Force pushing against your will. No, you cannot go back. Not there. Regret. This world is broken beyond repair. We must weave something new. A wagging finger. There is only so much thread in this place. Do not waste it. I am our only salvation. So when they say there's not, there's a limited amount of thread. You're on a path in the woods. Hmm. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. So do they mean stuff like, there's only so many times I can do this? It feels like we're going in a loop, but there's a limit. And so we shouldn't be wasting the thread somehow. Anyway, may let me make sure to save this so that we don't lose it. Now we're gonna start anew again. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. As usual, he forgets, I don't. I don't think we need to go through this again. Oh, okay. Thanks for telling me what to do. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. Lies the old cheat trick you. She will lie. Yes. We're probably gonna have to get good at skipping the stuff we've seen already. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. There's not even a chair in here. This cabin doesn't feel lived in at all. It's like they made this table so that I can have something to put against the door when I eventually go out. <laughs> The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hold up, I thought by this point last time we already got the voice of the hero. I don't have anything this time? Is it because I didn't ask those questions? Oh. Feel so lonely suddenly. <laughs> Feel like the, the more we do this, the more I'm gonna lose track of what we've seen and not seen. But, um... 
I am not opposed to eventually explore. I don't know if it's possible to explore all the outcomes, like how much of a tedium that would be. I mean, doing basically what I did last time, but then changing the last choice, stuff like that. But uh, I'll just do whatever order for now, because like it said, there's no wrong way to do it. And this time, let's try being a little bit friendly. Don't take the blade. If we know that taking the blade, but not killing her, she'll eventually come out anyway. Why don't we just let her go to begin with? The outcome seems to be the same. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. I thought the voice of the hero was a default voice. It seems like, no. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Was she that nice before? It's hypnotizing. Oh. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Didn't she say something different last time when I had a knife? But she didn't see me yet, did she? Does she know I have a knife already? <laughs> I'm here to save you! How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in. Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. She sounds really chipper. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay <laughs> focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. Forever's a long time. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end with capitals. We can go for an ultra fast thing today. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. She doesn't look evil today, but it might just be because I haven't done- Cause she, she might be thinking, what a dummy. This guy's real dumb. No. You're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. And I don't have a knife this time either. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. We know that we can get the dagger upstairs, but, mm, well, let's see. And if there isn't a key, do you have any other ideas? Maybe there's some way to break the chains? Or if that doesn't work, I guess we can always cut me out of them. With what? She offers the suggestion with almost complete nonchalance. With what? If we were stuck down here long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out if it meant we could finally be free. But what do you mean by cutting? What are we cutting here exactly? Are we cutting the chain or are we cutting the arm? What are we cutting? You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. Oh? You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. We haven't met a third person here so far, ever. Is there a third person here? Is someone else here? Mm, well, if they meant to lock us here, yelling probably wouldn't help. But <laughs> trying the door? We gotta try it. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Hey! 
Hey, let me out of here! Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. An otherworldly force begging me to stay in here. Well, this means I can't get the knife then. Nothing we can do about it. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. So far, I've still been very... <laughs> I haven't done what the narrator wants me to do a single time yet. Easier for whom? Ah, great question. Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. Well, yeah, the door is wooden. She barely <coughs> hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. This is the first time we've seen color, too. Isn't it? It's usually pretty grayscale, and then suddenly this... Oh my... Wait, how how strong is she that she's just doing this? Without yelling in pain? She just took one bite and she's already through the bone. What the hell? As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. Is it the knife? It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. But she's nice to me right now. If I try to stab her, she'll get mad. Maybe I'll just like sit aside and see what happens. Or I'll tell her there's a knife so she can stop trying to eat herself. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Ah! Uh, there's no option for us to slay her. Hmm. <sighs> Fine. I suspect later on if we come back here, there might be the choice, too. Against your better <gasps> judgment, ah! place the blade against the ragged, ah! self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. How are you okay with this? How is she okay with this? You guys, no, no warning, nothing? And this is another chance to see our unhumanly arms. The blade is sharp, Ooh! and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her ah! What? What? Why? Little effort? Okay, don't even talk about the effort. Why is she... Does she not feel? Her limb <gasps> falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. But then why did she have to wait for me then? Because she could have done that so much earlier. She did it because she felt like she could escape if it's you, if it's her and I. She didn't feel like that if it was just herself? She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. This is somebody's fetish. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Okay. Approach a locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches oh. the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. You can control me? Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Oh no, princess, run! <gasps> no, we gotta go full, full simp. Watch out! Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? You know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! If the narrator can control me like this, 
Then maybe somebody can control the princess too. She normally is okay, but then sometimes she just turns mega evil for some reason. Resist. The blade. Move the blade. As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. Don't come near me! Just go! She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. <laughs> what are you doing? Doing. She's brave. I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. Hold up. You gonna kill me? She plunges it into your chest, oh. tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Damn, girl, you could have just left me. I could have figured something out. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. Is, this hero is self-sacrificing. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Do you mean me? When you say two of you, me and the hero? Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. Uh, but it's worth it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ooh, ooh. She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Oh, just put me to death already. Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. <laughs> I'm so sorry! With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? No, we're going to chapter two. Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. The world hasn't ended yet. Everything goes dark, and you die. But there's no glass breaking sound. The Damsel, chapter two. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. So this seems to imply that even if I followed the narrator's words to a T in chapter 1, we'll still end up in this chapter 2. Oh, you bastard. You're in for it now. I'm wise to your tricks. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We just met for the first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? <laughs> if we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Yes. Voice of the smitten, huh? Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. <laughs> ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. Four? The princess, smitten, hero, me? Oh, that's four. Oh, so they're, they're directly acknowledging that I am um a thing too. What's my name? We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. Hum, about that. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. Yeah, I can agree with that. I can agree. Dad, I think we did this one already, right? Let me check. Let's assume I'm telling the truth and all this really did how already happened. Why should I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? 
Those are two very different. Oh, yeah, Let's yeah. Let's say for them. You died last time. You were the one who did us in, villain. Yeah. Well, not you in the literal sense, but you did everything you could to stop us from rescuing her. You took control of my body. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe it's because the entire world was at stake. No lone princess is worth that price. That's just like your opinion, man. I beg to differ. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to take a deep breath and assume that whoever is making the decisions here has the common sense to ignore your protestations. Go big or go home. Anyway, I believe your second question was, what's the point of doing it? What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Something we don't have too much... Mm, understanding of. Even at the end of chapter 2 so far, when we die... So the first time we die, it's like not a real death, but the second one seems realer because of the glass breaking sound. If it's the latter... What do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, yeah, that she yeah. would never? She's a perfect angel that you cruelly imprisoned as part of some convoluted, dastardly scheme. I agree. Convoluted? I don't know how this premise could be any more simple. Princess bad, stop her, save everyone. I'm with them. I'm gonna find a way to save her from that cabin. That's right, you can't stop all of us. We're going to sweep her off her feet if it's the last thing anyone does. Are these really the sorts of people you'd like to align yourself with? <sighs> You're not at the cabin yet. You still have plenty of time to reflect on the situation. I just hope for all our sakes that you make the right call. Have we seen the princess in chapter two yet? I feel like we should see. I want to see if she remembers and what she's like. Uh, let's briefly talk about the princess. Just be quick about it. Yeah, the only reason she was able to kill me last time was because I let her. She could barely hold a knife. How is she supposed to end the world? She just can. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. Okay, Maybe okay. it's her beauty that threatens the world. Oh, I agree. Sure, it's her beauty. Why not? And before you ask, no, we can't just keep her down there. If you don't slay her, she's going to find a way out. It's unfortunate, I know, but it's just the way it is. But she already got out. Last time. Who locked her in that basement? What is this place? People locked her in that basement. Hmm? Why couldn't they Look. slay her? I'm not supposed to- Oh. I, of course you're special. Calling us special isn't going to make us friends, even if it did feel nice. Some of the dialogue is the same, but then because of- depending on which voice we have, we hear different stuff. Oh, believe me, the last thing I want is for you and I to be friends. But I'm a professional, and I'm not going to let my dislike for you get in the way of helping you save the world. What aren't you telling me? I've told you everything you need to know. Not to sound like a broken record, but the... Okay. Great. Now, if you don't... Let's go. A warning. Before she will lie, she... We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. Not even her... Her uh, authenticity and being genuine, nothing like that. No, her, her surface level beauty is what we believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. What do you think, Hero? What should we do? I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. Let's go in. The 
picture makes us The interior oh. of the cabin is clean and elegant. What the heck? Its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. Still, no chair. But now it's a castle, what the heck? See, this is what I mean when I thought that the princess would be imprisoned in a more dungeon-like place. This is... Yeah, this is... different. And it didn't look like the cabin outside either. Because the outside picture is still the same. But then this is like... concrete and stuff? The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. This whole cabin is different than last time. Very different. Is it? I can't say I was paying much attention to the scenery last time around. You weren't even alive. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. Stop letting yourself get distracted. Hmm, you didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. That's what he said the first time around too. There's no mirror. There isn't. I'm sure the princess would tell us there was a mirror if she were up here. Yeah. In which case she'd be lying to you because, again, there isn't a mirror. What are you looking at? What am I looking at? I want to look at myself. I want to see how handsome I am. That's a great idea. We have to make sure we're looking our best before we save her. We shouldn't waste time preening. But if he is lying about the mirror, it might be important. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? This must be some kind of choice too, because last time we saw ourselves, it just said, it's you, and then I don't think anything came out of it, but maybe seeing ourselves is like a trigger to being able to unveil reality or something like that. Eh, let's look at it. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. A mirror is also a glass surface, isn't it? This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. It's gone. And now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out of place and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. Last time we got to see it. We got to look in the reflection. This time we didn't. I'm still not going to take the blade. Let's just go. My love, I've come for you. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. It's nicer than before, though. There's candles and stuff. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Shut up, hero. It's called love at first sight. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. She hasn't even shown any charm yet. You walk down the Ooh. stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. She's prettier, isn't she? She looks a little bit different. And there, there's a window. Why don't you climb out? Uh, her hand, her hand is here. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. 
The second chapter circumstances are for sure shaped by the first chapter circumstances. We were unwilling to hurt her, and now she's like calling me dashing hero. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want oh. to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. Wow, I've been so taken aback by her beauty that I didn't even notice that. Yes, that's a... Oh. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her, it was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. You'd be the first what? Oh, the narrator? Maybe what he knows is something about why this world seems to be looping and why new ones are getting created. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end, and now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. I need to even bring a knife down here. Hmm. I'm sorry about what happened last time. The narrator who sent me here to kill you took over my body. It was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. So what I said to you just now actually made sense? She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. Wait, say more crazy stuff. See how much she that's takes it in. she's perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? She doesn't. There's no one else like me. Oh, there's a lot of yous. I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. What happened after I died? You died, and now we're talking. It sounds more like she doesn't know what's going on, but she's not- she's like being a yes man to me. You killed me last time and it hurt a lot. Why did you do that? I'm sorry. Didn't you want me to? Did we? No? We warned her of the cruel forces seizing our body. That's practically telling her to kill us. She is our beloved, and she made the choice to free us of our misery, to show us mercy and make the best decision for everyone. She made the best decision for her. Don't be so quick to assign kindness. You're just opening yourself up to manipulation. I'm okay with that. We should say something that we know is not true. Because then we'll be able to tell if she's just BSing or not. But before we started talking, did the world end? Did you end the world? I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that just like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. Are you listening to her? That's a confession. And to it, I say yes. Yes, I do, my dear. Mm. Sometimes when we don't talk, other people, they can't stand the silence, and so they start offering more information, they start talking more. I wonder if that'll happen here. The princess's eyes quiver as she waits for your response. I didn't end the world? And she's talking. I didn't end the world. She's feeling out which is the right answer. 
she's clearly just saying what she thinks you want to hear. Yeah. Or she's innocent. How could a beauty like her be capable of ending the world? It's not rational. I didn't bring a knife. Do I have to cut you out again? I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists, and indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. Then why hasn't she left already? Why? She seems so different every time. We sort of have some idea why that is, I think, based on the, the very first route where she was fracturing and all that. Just like how we, we have multiple voices too. But how does... Why is that happening is the question. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. There's even a window here. A, a really accessible window. You can just jump right out. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? You've been overpowered, Hero. We don't care about your opinion anymore. She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. I can't, because I don't have a blade. Are you ready for rescuing, my dear? No. I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... You're what? Take over our body and force us to try and kill her? I would if you had a weapon. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. Oh my, you are a real simp. You wouldn't. Yes, I would. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? <sighs> you approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. It feels like someone is shaping the world in some way on the fly then. She would be fine with any idea we came up with, but then why would this even work in the first place? Because the person who bound her shouldn't have made it so loose. But... Is it working because I said so? I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. I told you, there's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. She's like... all neat and tidy too. Previously, she looked a lot more... depressed and stuff in the, the first cabin. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you, thank you so much. And you're not trying to kill me this time? The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. If only you had a weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. I didn't bring a dagger last time either, but it just sort of fell in. This time, that didn't happen. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? What do we do now? Leave and enjoy the world? What do you want to do? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I... I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. Do you want to go back to your kingdom? You're a princess of some kingdom, aren't you? She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection, and then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? She's so much of a doormat, it, <laughs> it worries me. Don't give her- if you feed her the idea, she's gonna end the world. Because <laughs> she's at a point- yeah, she definitely will. 
I want you to tell me what you want. I just want to make you happy. She can't just want to make us happy. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. The music is a little weird. Isn't it weird? It's like a little bit pitched weird. It is weird. Yeah, listen to it. There must be something you want. I just want to make you happy. What's happening to her art? It, her eyes are... Is she getting deformed? Is she broken? Oh! What's going on? The, the, the long quiet, the hairiness? What's going on is she's lying to you, only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting to trust me now? I have a feeling we're gonna break the world again. If we don't leave, the world's gonna end again. We haven't gone to a non-world ending ending yet. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna make a save here. But we have to keep playing on the save, same save file, so it's not like I can quick load back here and then try another option. Because I have to keep it all, right? So that's a bit annoying. Uh, gotta commit to it. But you need your own thing. You've just met me. You can't base your entire happiness around me. Okay, if that's what makes you happy. Hey, her hands got more detail, though. She didn't even have fingers earlier. This isn't right. I don't know what's going on, but this isn't right. I fail to see the problem here. She's just sweet on us. You don't have to act like it's a big deal. You're a horrible person. <laughs> We're talking in circles. I wonder how many more we can do though, because I feel like one more is the end. Like I, I can't, I can't go anymore. Oh. Do you want to end the world? Are you seriously asking her that? We've been over this one. No, I do not want to end the world. Oh, that one didn't move anything forward. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted. Should we leave or should we? Oh, if we keep asking, she's gonna... She's gonna unwind. I, I just want to leave. We can figure out the rest later. That sounds perfect. Oh! Oh. Oh, phew. She's back to normal. Normal? What are you talking about? Our angel has always been like this. Absolutely flawless. Okay, but I definitely had to, like, purposefully drive myself away from breaking the world again. <laughs> the princess takes your hand, the last hopes of the entire world slipping through your fingers as they intertwine with hers. Her hand fits perfectly with mine. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I like to think that you do, actually. Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love-blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? It's our happily ever after. Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh. The door slams in your face and the lock clicks. That's a familiar move. There was a window this time. Check it out. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. No, my love. L let go. I might hurt you again. Oh no. Did someone lock us in here? That's not fair. We're supposed to leave now. She's right. Supposed it isn't to. Fair, but the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Enough with this true love nonsense. You just met her. Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. That's just me. That's just what I think, okay? We're on the same page. You're the one who should shove off, narrator. I'm just along for the ride at this point. <laughs> Do you think you can open it? Well, I don't know. Do you think I can? 
Oh my gosh, she's talking like a high school teacher. Can I go to the washroom? I don't know. Can you? Of course she can. You believe in her, right? This does seem to be a world where our beliefs have some weight. Nobody is leaving this basement. I think we can open it if we try together. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door together. Blech. And the lock clicks Yay! and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? I told you our love was insurmountable. You and the princess make your way upstairs and... The blade, that's right, there's still a chance for you to do the right thing. Take the blade from the table and slay her before it's too late. That ain't happening. We got our happy ending. This is it. I'm not doing that. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You're taking every opportunity you can to draw out the end of the world and make me suffer. I hate you. I would be more on your side if you just told me what's happening. I've said this time and time again. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin. And then you step outside. Oh my god, I didn't die. Oh, wait, hold on. It's getting hairy again. A happy ending at last. We did it. What should we do now? W where did everything go? Oh no! Where did he go? My happy ending! Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. We have feathers. What kind of a monster are we? Oh. oh no, she- I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Okay, okay, I have some new developing thoughts. Let's get through. But you don't get the chance to make that jacket, nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. W where did she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a- Mirror? Why is it here? Why now? We are gathering. We're gathering different princesses for the handsy thing. Of course you're scared. This is the end for you. But it's not the end for me. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. I'm the only- so far, it looks like there's two things persisting throughout all these universes. Me, and the Hansy monster. Do it then. End us all before I die of a broken heart. Approach the mirror. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. Oh, I just remembered earlier I was saying, hey, the first time around in the first route, we got to see in the mirror, but it was during this part. It was during the world ending part, not when we first went into the cabin. It's gonna get confusing thinking about previous routes soon because <laughs> there's so much. It's me. You've grown. In what way? Because we sucked up that princess. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Oh, we can still go to the cabin. Hmm. Hello again. You are at the cabin. When I found you in the long quiet alone, I was terrified. What if you had decided to let me wither? So this is the last princess that we gave her, I think. She looks different than last time. Last time she was a lot more... 
amalgamation-y. These hands! I mean, these hands are the princess's hands, right? It's because before we came here, they've already been doing some gathering stuff. What if you had decided to let me wither? I would be letting you wither if I don't give you a princess. But your commitment now is final. Your ability to walk the path of mutual annihilation is vanished with your return. If you still wish to obliterate me, it will have to wait until I am complete. Flickering lights and empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Do we always come to the long quiet every time we end? This has happened three out of three times so far. Are you the same being as you were before? How much have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. Every vessel. We're giving her princesses as vessels. Her? That's a lot of questions. We're supposed to find different types of princesses, not just the same one, right? Different kinds, happy ones, threatening ones. You've been kinder to me than anyone else I've met. Why? Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature. And there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. Three out of three times, we keep getting taken to this, this long, quiet place. What are the conditions for the world breaking? Sometimes it's because I walk away, I refuse to go into the cabin, sometimes... Well, refusal to kill the princess seems to be a common condition. And then maybe some passage of time. Once this person is complete, I'm gonna kill them. See, this feels like something that we would say if we knew more about what's going on, but at this point I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know I was gonna kill you. When I go back, it's as if an invisible wall closes around me. Why can I not do the same things I've done before? Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen, and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now. Inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. Oh, fantastic! So we don't have to worry too much about tedium. Do you have any thoughts on this vessel? This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. What are you doing with her? Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. What we're looking at right now feels like some kind of a... grotesque body horror, cosmic horror thing. But the calming music makes me feel like, oh, maybe not. What do you feel about me? These vessels I've been bringing you. I've hurt them. The vessels are shaped by memories of you. 
but their impulses are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. To them you are a gate to something more, and any hurt you've caused them is understood as a fair price for freedom. But they are only thoughts and perspectives. They are not me. The vessels are shaped by memories of you. In the first cabin this time, we refused to hurt the princess, and so her memories of me is that I, I was a hero. Is that why she was so loving towards me? Their impulses are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. I'm a gate. They're okay with me hurting them, because it's freedom, price for freedom. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. To have joy, to have sadness, the undulation between these things is what makes the thing the thing it is. What do you want me to bring you next time? Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. My joy Gift. is in seeing what you choose. There are no wrong answers, and every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. When this is all done, do you know what you want to do? With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be, and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am, and what I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. I feel like I'm absorbing more this time than last time. Last time we saw her, I was like, what the hell? But this time, I feel like I'm actually understanding maybe at least like 50% of it. Or maybe I think I understand 50% of it. Something something Dunning-Kruger effect. So, you don't have any preferences on how you'd like to change or grow? Yeah, we're gathering these perspectives for you. We can pick which ones to give. I, I sort of automatically assumed I'm bringing you everything. But if that's not the case, then we might have to be careful about which ones we bring. But we can't really, we can't really change that, can we? Earlier, when the princess was unraveling, I wonder what would have happened if I just let her unravel. My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. You know that at the end of this, once you're finished, I'm going to kill you, right? There is still much to be seen. Neither of us know the depths of our being. Perhaps at the end of this, I will be the one to kill you. Or perhaps we will leave this place together and find new horizons to discover. How romantic. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? If I am to be an ocean, you have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. You will have your rest in due time, and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. The narrator probably knows at least a little bit of what she's talking about here. For some reason, I've been tasked with finding these new perspectives for this vessel container person. The princess was nice to me this time. Oh, entity. So I don't really want to attack her, but if I destroy myself... Going back just means she wipes my memories, I guess? You raise your will to end your life, but as it buries into the space your body should be, you feel nothing at all. One of the many hands in front of you reaches forward and gently touches the side of your face. There's nowhere for you to be, but here.
I can't even do that. Oh, I think we have to do this one. How did- how was I destroying my body? I, I, oh my god. I'm sorry, I, I will attack you. Your will cuts across the entity in front of you, but nothing happens. My roots burrow in an ocean beyond your sight. We cannot harm each other as we are now. We're too incorporeal. I'm ready to go back. I will long for your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. Do you hate me? Do you love me? What are you to me? What am I to you? We will meet again. I'm sure. Everything goes dark, and you die. Well, we're slowly making our way through whatever the hell's happening. Hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a little bit clearer what what is happening, but not the why. We're gathering these princesses, and we're gonna give it to that entity. But then disturbing stuff like why was the princess just eating through herself to get out of here and like whatnot? It's part of something bigger. Hum. Interesting, but also disturbing. And if the narrator has been insistent on not letting me know the full details of what's going on, maybe it's it's probably for a reason. Is it because I can't handle it? Or knowing the reasons will put me into despair? I don't know. I don't know, but I guess there's nothing we can do except keep going forward and find new perspectives. <laughs>